beautiful county. They say that this is the most beautiful part of, of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, Harrison County is the most beautiful part of Kentucky. It lies on the edge of the bluegrass and uh, uh, we have surrounding hills. We have a long valley, narrow valley. Uh, we have Licking River flowing through it. At one time, we had uh, commerce on the river. Now, of course, we don't have commerce on the river. We still have old buildings that were built here in the 1700s. My people's first house is owned by Joe B. Hall, a former uh, basketball mm -hmm. coach of Kentucky. And it's been lived in continuously since 19, I mean, since 1782 or three. It's a log house, it's 36 feet long, and it's in excellent state of repair. And people are still living in it. Joe has it beautifully uh, set up. He has a horse farm there now. And we have many brick places that were built. We have uh, always tried to uh, keep the history correct about them. And we're still working, correcting. We're uh, working on a, a new history of this county. Uh, in town we have a great number of old, old uh, buildings that uh, are, uh, well, they're historical, on historical list, and people uh, just almost worship them. In the background, you may be able to see at one corner of the, uh, the courthouse, there's a log cabin. And this has been a courthouse, it's been a library, it's been most everything you can think of. At the present time, it is uh, a radio station, WCYN operates out of this uh, uh, log cabin and uh, it's in an excellent state of repair and it's been used every day of uh, over 200 years that it has lived here. And uh, churches, we have our old churches that have been built uh, way back when they started out with a log church and then in just a few years they, they became brick churches and were replaced with uh, if they were replaced or rebuilt with stone and brick. They're uh, old and they have quite a history. We're very proud of them. We're very proud of many of our buildings and uh, our industries have carried on. We've had great strides in industries. We uh, at one time were the premier uh, Whiskey County. This county had 30 distilleries and Bourbon County had 34 and we almost cornered the market. We had some of the most famous brands known at the time and uh, since Prohibition we just had one distillery but it made as much whiskey as the other small distilleries made all this time. We were one of the first uh, areas to bring in uh, Shorthorn cattle. We brought in uh, 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 new breeds of sheep and hogs. We've been a very progressive county and uh, it showed up in our history and in our relations. And many people come here and uh, like I was born in uh, Bourbon County and never felt at home till I came back down here when I was 19 years old because all my folks were here. But many people come here and they say that this is the most friendly spot they have ever been. And when uh, people from our businesses we have a great many businesses from out of state, from all over the country here. And when people from our businesses come here, and then they're going to be transferred someplace else, they all leave regretfully. They all love it, every one. That says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. I have a question. How did, where did Harrison come from? How did it get its name, the county? And how did Cynthia get its name? Well, uh, one of the early uh, people who came here was Colonel Ben Harrison, Benjamin Harrison. And he came in here early. And then along in the, well, in the late 70s, 1770s, and he came in. And when they farmed the, the uh, city, and then later the county, he was very active in this. And Colonel Harrison had this part of the Harrison County, which was bigger at that time than it is now. But he, the county was named after Colonel Benjamin Harrison, named in his honor. Uh, right near to where the first uh, fort was, there's a vault. Colonel, uh, uh, Captain Ma Matthias Lair built a vault out of a, a rock cliff. 
and this clip was uh, cut out and this vault made back in it and all of his people are buried there from back that time and when he got the, uh, the vault completed and got his people in there and buried there he went to where the site of the massacre was and gathered up all the bones where they'd been buried in a mass grave and he gathered up the bones of approximately 40 or 50 people and they are buried in there in, mm -hmm. in some large uh, uh, caskets. Now these people are mostly buried in iron caskets. Vandals kept bothering the vault, so they did uh, concrete across the front of it. But they have uh, great big slabs, marble slabs, telling who all's in there. Mm -hmm. Of course, they don't know uh, the 40 or 50 who were buried there. I have some uh, great uncle Peter that was buried there, but you don't really know mm -hmm. for sure. But that's, uh, that's something of local interest. To, and uh, a lot of people come in from other states. And within the last year, I've had people in from, from Texas, from California, from Nebraska, Missouri, Florida, Indiana, Ohio, and several people coming back to, to search for their roots here. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I'm retired, I have plenty of time to go with them. <laughs> and I, I really enjoy it. Great. And uh, I do a lot of work for people that are searching for their roots. My name's Jack Keith, and I'm Commonwealth Attorney for the 18th Judicial Circuit, um, which includes four counties, Harrison, Pendleton, Robertson, Nicholas counties. My office is here in Cynthiana, but I have uh, prosecutorial responsibilities in all four counties for felony offenses. And um, um, I have the same judicial district as our circuit judge has, which is those four counties. And it's my responsibility to prosecute felonies in those four counties. After those cases either come out of the district court or we initiate prosecution uh, through a direct submission to the grand juries. What can you two tell, tell us about Max Winford? Well, Judge Mack, Mr. Lale certainly remembers him and has known him significantly longer than I had. But uh, Judge Mack, as we knew him, uh, practiced law here um, in a private, uh, as a private attorney. Then during the uh, Roosevelt administration, went in as a uh, United States District Attorney for the Eastern District of Kentucky. In 1937, he went to the federal bench and uh, became at that time the youngest federal judge in the United States. After he became the uh, youngest federal judge in the United States, he died while still on the bench, although he was uh, 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 not as active as he had been. He essentially retired as the chief judge of the Eastern District. Um, I think Judge Mack died about 1978, Paul, I think somewhere in there, I think. Uh, he wrote probably one of the most classic books in Kentucky called The Kentucky Lawyer. And uh, it's, a, it's a marvelous book on Kentucky lawyers and tales that he'd seen and uh, incidences and funny stories about lawyers and courtroom experiences that he'd had. And it's uh, still a classic and always will be a classic. Judge Mack was a, a brilliant man, a farmer, a fox hunter, and uh, uh, also a, a, a fine jurist, and uh, extremely well respected in our community. Aside from that, he had um, his son, John Swinford, uh, is a well-known practicing attorney here and an outstanding member of the Kentucky Bar, served in the General Assembly for several years, and was majority floor leader in the uh, uh, Kentucky House representative for a number of years and as I said still practices in the the firm of Swinford and Sims uh, that's still in existence here and uh, Judge Mack uh, put a real stamp on our community and um, uh, as um, sort of one of our patriarchs that we all think a great deal of and uh, he um, he never forgot his hometown and I guess them uh, he uh, in, in Kipling's terms he sat with Kings but uh, uh, he never lost the common touch, and uh, he, he was, had a, a significant dignity as an individual, but he never forgot his folks at home, and that's one thing we'll always remember him for. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lale remembers him, I'm sure, uh, more intimately than I would. He also, I think, was the finest Sunday school teacher I ever listened to, and uh, was well uh, qualified to take the pulpit. He, he could uh, bring a fine sermon. And uh, he always had a, a little human touch, as Jack says. I know one time uh, he gave a nice talk from a pulpit, but he forgot to take up a collection. And everybody started out, and he said, wait a minute, I have forgotten one thing. The most important part of this day is to me to give everybody a chance to contribute. He said, we're going to place a hat. 
<laughs> Richmond, the county seat of Madison County. The Madison County population is 54,544. Area square miles, 443. Rank, 21st. Madison County is located in the 6th Congressional District. We're standing across the street from the Madison County Courthouse. The county seat is Richmond, Kentucky. To my left, we have the gentleman whose name is Hank Everman, who has so graciously volunteered to come out in this cold weather today to give us some information historically related to the county of Madison. Um, what can you tell us about the formation of Madison County? Madison County was originally part of Virginia. It was the uh, fifth county that was organized in Virginia uh, in 1786. And then, uh, of course, Kentucky did not become a state until 1792. The original courthouse was at a little village called Milford, which is about four miles south of here toward Berea. And it wasn't until 1798 that the justices on the court decided to move the courthouse to this location and a very prominent uh, farmer and political leader named John Miller owned the land uh, on which you now see this courthouse behind us. There have been three courthouses on this square, but this one was constructed in 1849 at a cost of roughly $40,000. And of course it has held up very well. They have added two annexes on each side to it in recent years, but there's been a lot of history go through this courthouse behind us. That's great. How did it get the name Madison County? Uh, it was named after James Madison, who of course was not only one of the most prominent of all the Virginia legislators at the time, but later would be the father of the Constitution, and of course our fourth president. And uh, Richmond itself took a name after Richmond, Virginia. Um, there's a lot of history in this county, and I know it'd be difficult to put it in capsule form, but could you briefly run over some of the things of major interest? When most people think of Madison County, they think of the founding of Boonesboro in the summer of 1775, and it was certainly one of the most important forts on the Kentucky River. Uh, the great majority of settlers who came into Kentucky came by way of Boonesboro in the 1700s. Uh, we've had a lot of very famous history in this uh, area, not only because of Boonesboro, but because of the famous Civil War battle, uh, one of the few Confederate victories uh, during the Civil War. Uh, one of the most prominent of the early leaders was Green Clay, who uh, amassed a fortune, including some 200,000 acres of land, not only in present-day Madison County, but throughout central southern Kentucky and down into northern Tennessee. And uh, Green Clay showed the potential to any Virginian or Carolinian who wanted to migrate into this area because he opened warehouses. Uh, he had all types of farms, uh, taverns.